Welcome back to the workshop. This is Tim for Tim Krause Electronics, and this is part seven of our $75 Dumble Build series. At the end of the last video, we had a major noise problem that we figured out. Uh, I had the, uh, the secondaries on the output transformer switched around, or actually it was the plates, but I couldn't switch those two around, so I switched the secondaries around. Uh, and that solved that noise problem. And now we're having a little bit of difficulty getting the voltages where they are supposed to be. Uh, the filament voltages were a little bit high, so I, I need to find a way to drop those a bit. The bigger issue is that the relays were seeing a much higher voltage than they should. And uh, I, I think I mentioned at the, last, uh, at the end of the last video that I thought that they were up around, uh, what did I say, 16 volts or something like that. Turns out it was even higher than that. I went back and measured it again, and it was uh, closer to 19 volts. So what I'm going to do is... The, uh, the low voltage power supply board that's coming out, um, it was starting to get a little bit messy anyway because I had, had to add a couple of components that weren't originally on there. So I'm going to just rebuild that. And uh, the dropping resistor in that power supply, uh, on the PV schematic, it calls for a 1 ohm resistor. Well, I couldn't get a 1 ohm resistor, so I, just, uh, I decided to get a 2.7 ohm resistor because that's what I could find. That 2.7 ohm resistor was working. It was dropping the uh, filament voltage to a good level. But because that circuit was drawing so much current, it was actually exceeding the rated uh, dissipation for that 5 watt resistor. So I had to put, I had bought two of them, so I had to put those two in parallel, which dropped the resistance down and then the voltage went back up. So this time I just went out and got a 2.2 ohm 10 watt resistor. And I'm not sure if I'm going to need 10 watts, um, but it's probably going to be... I probably could get away with a 7 watt resistor. Um, I'll, I'll find out once I get it put together and take some measurements. Uh, but just to be on the safe side, I wanted to go with a 10 watt resistor. So that 2.2 ohm resistor ought to drop voltages back down to a good level for the filaments. And then for the relays and everything else that's being powered off of that leg, uh, I'm going to use an LM317 voltage regulator to drop the voltage down to 12 volts uh, so that I know it'll be a safe level for those relays. So before we get started, don't forget to hit thumbs up and subscribe. Take some time to visit TimKElectronics.com. We've got some DIY products there that you'll want to check out. Let's get started on the build. with this Vero board, it's a lot like going to the dentist. There's a lot of drilling and scraping, and nobody really likes doing it, but the alternative is usually even more painful. Just putting a little extra flux on here. I've got a flux core solder, but um, this should help just get that solder to flow underneath these turrets.
Okay, so I've got that new power supply board uh, assembled and it's installed here. And uh, I ran into a bit of trouble after I did that. Um, I was pretty careful to uh, make sure that the standoffs were far enough away from uh, where the AC is coming in that I wouldn't cause any short circuits. And apparently I wasn't careful enough because it did short against the standoff into the chassis. And so I blew a fuse here, had to replace that. Fortunately, it was fused, so I didn't uh, damage the transformer. And then I went back through and took measurements of everything again. And our filaments are, uh, the, the power tube filaments are seeing about 6.7 volts now, I think. Um, so within a safe range, uh, close enough to the 6.3 that it wants to see that it's, it's not going to be burning out those tubes too quickly. And then uh, adjusted the voltage regulator here so that these relays are getting exactly 12 volts now. So all of that's settled, and I'm, I'm having some noise issues still. And at first I thought uh, maybe the noise problem was because uh, of these uh, filament wires that were going underneath the circuit board. So I replaced those with some shielded cable. That didn't solve the problem. Um, you know, and I didn't think that that was the issue, but it, you know, just trying to eliminate everything that I possibly can. Because what I've got right now is, uh, I've got a little bit of, of hum that could be a ground loop problem. And then I've also got just that the tone of it is really nasally, uh, and not pleasant at all. Um, I mean, I, I am getting sound out of it. I got the tubes biased properly. That's all working. But uh, the sound is just terrible. So one of the things I'm going to try here is I've, I've got these wires separated, and this shouldn't be uh, an, an issue. All of these wires going down along the control panel, those are all low voltage and very low current, so there shouldn't be any crosstalk between those wires. But just to be on the safe side, I'm going to uh, separate these a little bit and uh, just you know one by one eliminate any any possible causes of, of that nasally tone um, and then what I'll do with the grounds I'm, I'm pretty sure now that it's actually a ground loop that's causing the, the hum and so all of these ground wires that are connected here by the input I'm going to just one by one separate those and ground them somewhere else to see if that uh, fixes the problem but I couldn't really do any of that well I could have but it would have taken way too long I need to be able to leave the tubes in this so that I can make a change, fire up the amp, see if it fixed it, and then you know keep going through that cycle over and over. Um, so I had to build this um, amp caddy, uh, cradle, stand, whatever the heck you want to call it. And the only thing that I had before was this, and I had built this to work on a deluxe reverb, and it worked fine for that, but it's not adjustable. So went online, looked at uh, some of the designs uh, for amp cradles out there, and it seems like almost every amp cradle is based on the same design that you see on, uh, I think it's the Weber, the Weber design. They, they offer one on their website, and everybody else has pretty much copied that. And I don't like that design, because the amp just kind of sits there, and it's not secured in there, and um, you can never turn the amp well, I guess you could. You would just have to lift the amp up and manually turn it over and set it back down. But anyway, I just uh, there are things about that design that I don't really care for. So I decided to, uh, to go with a, a new design of my own, and I did, just wanted to show you what I did here. This is the first attempt, uh, and there are a couple of things in here that I am going to improve upon. Um, but for, for the first attempt, I think it turned out really good. So let me show you some of the features on this. Now, first of all, one of the things that I really like about this is that you can rotate it and then it actually locks into position. It's got a, um, a piece on the side here that, uh, that you turn this so you can see how this works. Uh, this, the, I had to redo this. The glue is still setting, so I'm just going to pull on this instead of pulling on the handle. But when you pull that out, it releases the pin, which locks into these holes. So you can turn it. 180 degrees here, lock it into place so that you've got the tubes facing out, and then you can, you know, turn it to a, a number of different angles, uh, and it always stays in place really well. 
So here's the handle, and it's just a strip of oak. Uh, oak is, is very strong and very flexible, so, so when you pull this handle out, it's like a little spring. So you let it go and the, the pin pops into this hole and holds it in place. And uh, actually I should probably, let me take this off of this here. I'll take this amplifier off of here to show you the other features. And one of the nice things about this design is that it's really easy to adjust the length. There's a, a pin that's hidden underneath that keeps you from pulling this all the way out, and it actually keeps this uh, fairly well aligned. Um, and that, uh, I, I think that's one of the things that I'm actually going to change. I think I can improve on that design. So um, I'm going to get rid of this piece and rebuild it. Uh, so that it, it slides in and out a little bit easier and then I'll also add the ability to, to kind of lock it in place because once you've got the amp chassis bolted on here that keeps this from sliding in and out but it would be nice to have a little extra um, just uh, uh, thumb or uh, what do they call it um, yeah thumb screw kind of thing to to lock it down so um, just so that you're not putting any dimensional strain on on the uh, the bolts holding the chassis in place uh, what was I going to talk about though oh yeah so this will go wide enough for a, uh, a twin reverb chassis so that's I mean it gets pretty big or slide that in it can get narrow enough for something like this this is my little 5 volt amp um, so even that would work in here so a lot of flexibility there and uh, again, you, with this piece, you can turn it all the way over so that you can have the tubes facing up. Or you can, you know, put it anywhere you need it. Um, so anyway, the reason I'm showing you this is because I think this is better than the other designs that are out there. And I would have liked it if somebody offered this in a kit form. So let me know in the comments, is this something that you'd want to buy as a kit? I don't know yet how much I would have to charge for it. I can't imagine it would be a whole lot more expensive than anything else that's out there, but I do think that it's a much better design, and uh, after I rebuild this, I'll probably uh, go into a little bit more uh, depth uh, about this and just kind of show you the changes that I made. But just let me know in the comments below, is this something you want to see uh, offered as a kit on our website, timkelectronics.com? If so, are there any other features you'd like to have? Uh, you know, I, I considered maybe putting a tool caddy on the end here so that you can hold, you know, something to hold your cutters and, and screwdrivers or whatever else. Um, let me know what you think. It's going to be made, uh, I'm not going to use this stuff. I just had this melamine uh, laying around and I figured it would slide better than uh, plywood. But I think what I'll end up using is just some more of this uh, maple-faced plywood because that seems to slide pretty well anyway. So now that I've got this built, what I've got to do is go through the amp and sort out the uh, the noise issues and that nasty nasally tone, figure out what, what's causing that. And once I get that done, that's, that's all the problems we're having right now. I mean, everything else seems to be working fine. Um, so at that point, I'll be able to start working on the reverb circuit. And I'll get you some sound clips, too. I'll, I'll do my best to get some good quality sound clips for you once I've got it working. So that's it for this video. Uh, give me a thumbs up if you like it. Hit subscribe if you'd like to see more of these. And also be sure and uh, visit our Patreon page. Anything that you can do to, to help me out uh, helps us all out because it, it's going to help me to, uh, to be able to post more of these videos. Anyway, that's the end of this one. We'll see you in the next video.